Metal plasticity is one of the most frequently used material non narrative option available in NCS Mechanical. It represents a wide variety of commonly available ductile metals that are well understood to yield in accordance with the one message yield criteria. When included in an FE model, metal plasticity may sometimes have a convergence challenge. In this auto video, we will explain how to diagnose when a metal plasticity model is a contributing factor in non-convergence. Remember, when a ductile metal is loaded beyond its elastic limit, covalent bonds at a microscopic level begin to break and grain boundaries begin to slip. This phenomenon can be observed at the microscopic level as yielding when non coverable plastic strains and permanent deformation begin to develop. The effect of such yielding can also contribute to a reduction of stiffness in the structure. Such stiffness loss is a real physical phenomenon. It is part dependent and it can be highly nonlinear. The common metal plasticity models available in NCS are bilinear isotropic, multilinear isotropic, bilinear kinematic, and multilinear kinematic. They are all programmed to predict yielding in accordance with the one message yield criteria. In this how to video, we will use a multilinear plasticity model and show how to diagnose convergence problems for metal plasticity. First of all, multilinear plasticity. Multilinear allows users to represent the stress versus plastic strain relationship with multiple data points. These data points can be directly input to ANSYS to define the plasticity model. A very important thing to remember is for the multilinear model, elastic perfected plastic behavior is assumed for the strains beyond the last trace strain data point enter. Perfect plasticity as shown here can be represented as a flat line where plastic strains will grow with no increase in stress. To put it in a different way, perfectly plastic behavior represents a point of zero tangent stiffness. When an FEA model with metal plasticity fails to converge, it is important to first understand what the stress state of the material is at the point of non-convergence. In other words, where on the stress strain curve are we at the specific location? Any amount of loading beyond the last multilinear stress and plastic strain data point can potentially induce instability due to zero stiffness in one or more elements. If this is occurring across an entire section in a primary load path of the structure under a force based load, this will result in non convergence. If material is not on the elastic perfectly plastic part of stress strain curve, then non convergence might not be a physical instability, it could be numerical instability caused by very large load over one substep without ability to recover by bisections. Or perhaps an insufficiently constrained model causing a spike in strain energy in just one nodal location. Fortunately, the text in the solver output helps to tell the story of the convergence history from start to finish. With a careful review of warnings, errors, and plastic strain development recorded in the solver output, together with a careful review of available stress and plastic strain results, user can determine if the nonlinear convergence trouble is related to metal plasticity or something else. Let's take a look at a simple example. Here we are looking at a quarter symmetry model of a rectangular plate under a pressure load. Click on the geometry from outline tree. The material assigned to it is multilinear structural steel. Let's go to workbench and check the engineering data for the material definition. The definition of multilinear hardening is defined here by table input. Plasticity initiates when equivalent stress reaches 260 megapascal. Note that the strain input is plastic strain instead of total strain. Therefore, it starts from zero. Also, we can see that the slope of the curve 
decreases with each successive data point. In mechanical, we can review the definition of the material when we click on material from the tree. For the mesh, we applied a mesh size to the thickness direction of the plate geometry so that we have three layers of elements. A pressure is added on one of the surfaces of the geometry. For boundary condition, we defined it to make the geometry a quarter symmetry part. In analysis settings, we switched on the automatic time stepping and defined initial number of substeps to be 200, minimum substeps to be 25 and maximum substeps to be 10,000. This means the solver will start solving the problem with 200 subsets. If everything goes well, it will try to gradually increase the substep size. Accordingly, the number of substeps will reduce till the minimum substep defined at 25. On the other hand, if the convergence is difficult, the solver will gradually reduce the substep size, resulting a greater number of substeps up to maximum substeps defined at 10,000. Another change we made under analysis setting is that we switched on the large deflection formulation. The reason we did this with the plasticity material, we expect geometric nonlinearity will kick in. Before solving the problem, let's go to solution information and put a number 4 for Newton Raphson residuals and identify element violations. The reason to do so will be explained a little later. Now we are ready to test run the model. For this problem, the solver runs for a certain number of substeps and gets terminated. You can see a yellow lightning bolt icon in the solution, indicating that the solution is not completed. Even though the simulation is not fully completed, we can still check the results at those converged substeps to verify if the model is behaving as expected. Let's have a look at the equivalent stress and plastic strain results. Click on the last converge point, which is one before the failure, and click Retrieve this result. We can see that most stress and distortion is concentrated on the constraint edge. A check of the plastic strain shows large amount of plastic strain developing across the section of the plate. In fact, the amount of equivalent plastic strain exceeds what we define in our material input in engineering data. Checking the convergence history, it shows that the last step is not converged. Only when the purple point balance residual force is under the force criterion, it is converged step. You might wonder, could we check where the unbalanced residual occurs on the geometry? Here is when the settings we put for solution information come in handy. By setting a number 4 for newton raphson residuals, the solver will save the contour plot of residual force for last 4 iterations. The development of residual force can be visualized. The area is evolving and the amount of unbalanced force drastically increases for the last two iterations. So what's the problem then? Why can't the solver converge with so much residual force? Here HDST shows the highly distorted elements and then the question comes, what if we allow the solver to use even smaller substep size? Will this problem converge? If the maximum number of substeps were 10 or 100 or unspecified, then increasing the maximum number of substeps can be beneficial. But for this example, where we have already set the maximum number of substeps to 10,000, so further increase will not help much. Let's pick a node in the critical region and plot the stress versus plastic strain curve. First of all, we need to evaluate the stress and plastic strain respectively.
Now click on the chart from the solution tab. Select stress and plastic strain for the node from solution. Set the x axis as plastic strain and put the labels for both the axis. Now we are looking at stress versus plastic strain curve of the node. We should neglect the last data point as it is the last unconverged iteration. What we observe here is curve is becoming flat after this point. The stress for this data point is 550 megapascal and plastic strain is about 0.2. This indicates that the points after this point are beyond the multilinear plastic model defined in engineering data. As we mentioned before, such perfect plasticity introduces instability to the system since plastic strains can develop with no further increase in the load, especially when there is a group of elements exhibiting perfectly plastic behavior at once. We may see such non-convergence since the plastic hinge has developed. So for this problem, how to overcome the convergence? In fact, in real life, it's not normal to see a material suddenly lose strength entirely. When we define multilinear plasticity, the material stress strain data should be greater than the expected strain range of the simulation. In this case, let's go back to the engineering data and add three more data points for the multilinear plasticity. Now, for the last data, stress is 730 megapascal and plastic strain is 0.95. Let's refresh the model and rerun the problem to see if there is any improvement. You can see with this change, the highly nonlinear simulation solved successfully. The quick summary for this how-to video, when included in an FEA model, metal plasticity can sometimes be a source of convergence challenge. When non-convergence is encountered in a structural nonlinear application, it is important to use different diagnostic tools in mechanical to understand possible source of non-convergence. Loading beyond the last trace versus plastic strain data point in multilinear plasticity model can lead to non-convergence in a force controlled simulation when material yields through a primary load path because of elastic perfectly plastic assumption. One way to overcome this is to add more stiffness to the material by adding more points to the stress versus plastic strain curve, ensuring that sufficient number of maximum substrates has been specified will also allow the solver to apply a smaller load increments during the highly nonlinear portion of the load history. Reviewing the converged results such as stress strain response at specific locations as well as checking the regions of element distortion high force residuals can also give you a clue to what kind of corrective action is needed. If you find this video helpful, please like, comment and subscribe. To find more information about plasticity or other topics, check our channel for more how-to videos and visit ansys.com slash courses today.